The year is 1908. A Belgian officer is about to make a discovery in the Billy Forest by the Uli River in the Congo. They looked like gorilla skulls, but gorillas were not from this area. The officer took the skulls to the Royal Museum in Belgium. He had no idea that over a hundred years later, we would still be talking about those skulls. The Billy Ape. This one is one that I have heard so much about. And honestly, until I started looking into it, I had never heard the full legitimate story. I just heard that there were giant apes walking around in the Congo that killed lions. Then I looked into it. Is that really the case? I mean, Joe Rogan says it is. So it's got to be right, right? Love Joe. It was not meant as a slight. About 19 years later, after the skulls were originally brought to the museum, the curator of the museum found the skulls again, and he gave them an official classification. Gorilla Gorilla Yolensis. Assuming that it's because it was a gorilla found by that river with that name that's hard to pronounce. Now, what makes the Billy Ape such an iconic animal? While regular chimps grow about five feet max, the billy ape is well known to get six foot. I'm six foot one, so we're right about neck and neck. We've seen what regular chimps can do. Now just imagine one that is bigger and badder. Uh, it's not something I would ever want to run into in the wild. They are supposedly not afraid of people. They'll come right up to them, not, uh, although not aggressive towards people. That is a big distinguishing factor. They might be bold and brash. <laughs> belongs in the trash but they don't seem to bother people too much now there were two different subsects of billy ape there were the tree beaters now the tree beaters were a little bit more timid they would stay a good portion of their time up in the tree away from predators and the locals actually hunted these guys with poison tipped darts and then the reason that the billy ape became so well known are the lion killers now Here's the thing about the lion killers. It was said that they nested on the ground like a gorilla. Now, I'm sure you don't really think too much of that considering the fact that a gorilla, yeah, I mean, a gorilla is big and buff and whatever. You know, chimps are scary and intimidating. Well, the average chimp will get bodied by a lion or a leopard. That's just how crazy these big cats are. They can body a chimp. And if they nest on the ground, especially areas with high density of these big cats, um, they will inevitably get picked off one by one. That's just how it works. So the fact that these chimps were known to nest on the ground a majority of the time, that's a big factor that makes them different than the rest of the chimps. But the reason that they call them lion killers is because, well, it has nothing to do with lions at all. Some locals happened to walk up on a bunch of these apes eating a leopard carcass. Now, they don't know whether the apes actually killed the leopard. All they know is that they were eating the remains. And chimps do eat meat. Chimps eat plenty of meat. So do bonobos. And they will actively hunt things like monkeys. But to hunt a leopard? So coupling the fact that they're not afraid to nest on the ground, which most of them are because they get eaten by cats, and the fact that they've been seen eating big cats, put two and two together, and I guess maybe lion sounded more sexy than leopard, so they were known as the lion killers. Now with little bits and pieces of things like that floating around, little rumors, there are these apes that are just a little bit different than everybody else, and oh, I saw them eating a lion one time. 
They must be huge. They must be huge to be able to eat that line over the course of a hundred years that they've been known. I think the story might get twisted just a little bit, like a big game of telephone. I could be wrong, but that's what it seems like. There's a couple interesting things that are different about these chimps or these apes than any other ape and so they get a reputation. Now in 1970, those same skulls were looked at again, and it was determined that they were indistinguishable from a Western gorilla skull. How did it end up there? No one's ever seen a gorilla in this area. Doesn't mean that it isn't possible, but kind of seems like maybe there's a little something fishy going on, at least in the very beginning. That was until 1996, when Swiss photographer Carl Amon went to the area to search for gorillas because, I mean, there's a gorilla skull that came from there, right? And no one had documented gorillas in that area. I mean, to be the first one to take a picture of a gorilla from this area, that would be huge. But instead of finding gorillas, he found something he wasn't expecting. He found a skull, and the skull looked like a cross between a gorilla and a chimp. It had the facial structures of a chimp and the brow ridge of a gorilla. He spent plenty of time searching for these guys. He found piles of scat that were three times the size of a normal chimps, and he found handprints that were bigger, he claimed, than gorillas. And he got pictures on trail cameras, and this is when things went crazy. Now there's a skull, now there's picture evidence that there's something there. It may not be a gorilla, but it's a chimp that no one knew was there. So Carl went back in the year 2000. I was five years old. And this time he didn't actually find any chimps, but he did find some ground nests, which made everything even crazier because chimps aren't supposed to nest on the ground. And over the next few years, Amon obsessed over these apes. He got more people to come and join the cause to find these apes. And in 2004, an American primatologist Cleve Hicks arrived, and that would change everything. Hicks and the local trackers accomplished a lot in their time there. They spent nights underneath fruit trees waiting for chimps to come by in the morning. They found that in the 7,000 square mile area that they were in, that there was chimps everywhere. They were, they, they were just absolutely everywhere. And they each had personal competitions on who could catch malaria the most. Cleve said he caught it no less than 25 times. They also got very good pictures of these apes. They were able to get DNA samples. And because of this, they finally got the conclusion they were after. What is the Billy Ape? And drum roll, please. They were chimpanzees. That's it. They're, they were just chimpanzees. Not a subspecies, not a new species. They were just chimpanzees. Not to say that that discovery wasn't incredible. They weren't overly big, but their behavior was what set them apart. It was found out that about a fifth of them nested on the ground, which was something especially as I said before, coming from an area with big cats, they don't really do, but this group does. They use tools way more often than other chimps, and not only tools, but the longest tools they had ever seen. They used upwards of two and a half meter long sticks to pick out ants and termites and to get honey. They would use the longest ones that anyone had ever seen a chimp use. They aren't aggressive towards people, as I stated before, but they also showed no fear of people. They would just walk right up to you and be like, what are you doing here? And as I said before, in that 7,000 square mile area, every single one of the chimps that lived in there all acted the exact same. It's one of the largest populations of chimpanzees in the world that we know of. It was just hiding in plain sight. Well, you know, they were there for us to find, that's about it. So in conclusion, the Billy Ape can show us many things. That a story can turn into something that it's not. Is it an incredible thing that we actually found them? Oh, absolutely, they're super cool. They're different than any other chimpanzee than we've ever found. They have plenty of unique behaviors that are not found in any other chimp population, and they definitely deserve to be protected. Now, it's been kind of difficult for that to happen because the area where they live in has been in a brutal civil war. And one of the same reasons that the guys who were going after Gustav had to stop was one of the same reasons that we kind of stopped going back there because there was just, there's a lot of genociding going on over there. So hopefully these apes can be preserved. I highly doubt I will ever actually go there, but I would love to be able to one day and hopefully they are still there if I ever do get that opportunity. Regardless, they deserve to be left alone to live their life. And sadly, chimpanzees are poached 
They're sold in the illegal pet trade. They're hunted for bush meat. If anything, these intelligent creatures just deserve to be left alone to do their own thing. If you made it this far, I greatly appreciate you. Hey guys, I got a Patreon. I will put the link in the description below. Also, right here. I would really appreciate it if you check that out if you enjoy my content. Like and comment if you like this video. Let me know if you like this type of video. And if not, tell me why you didn't like it. I want to hear from you guys. We just hit 50k and honestly, I can't believe it. I'm going to keep on coming out with more bangers. And hopefully every single video just gets that much better. Thank you all for watching. and Stay wild.